Um, yeah, let's start. It's two o'clock. Thanks for coming to my talk about uh, repair cafes and the maker scene and the synergies that I could imagine between the both of them. Um, my name is Andreas or uh, repair folks or Fraxinas when it comes to doing IT stuff or repair stuff. I'm an electrical engineer and um, I work as a software developer uh, at Make TV in Cologne and they make a, a solution for cloud-based uh, video producing. Um, I'm the co-founder of the Aschaffenburg Repair Cafe that was in 2014. And um, since uh, 2016, I've been doing repairs on a daily um, magazine on German television. Uh, ARD Buffet is what it's called. And I do that uh, uh, once every few weeks for different stuff that you can fix at home and people can fix on their own. And um, I'm a member of the uh, Aschaffenburg Makerspace Schaffenburg e.V., um, which should not be confused with the Dutch furniture maker Schaffenburg, which also exists. So that is Schaffenburg.com. We didn't find out about uh, the existence of that company until after the name was already chosen. Um, the name is actually a pun uh, since the hom hometown is Aschaffenburg, and when you get rid of the A, then uh, it's Schaffenburg, and Schaffen is also the German noun for to create something, so like Erschaffen. Uh, so it's a, a create. Create castle. Yeah, create castle. <coughs> right. So that's the wrong direction. Good. So now I, I've got an intro quote. I translated that into English. And it says, in a way, everybody is a hacker. Everyone has their tricks to deal with technology in everyday life. And the guy who said that was... Um, Irgendwo ist jeder Hacker. Jeder hat so seine Tricks im Alltag, mit der Technik umzu umzugehen. Es gibt tausend Kleinigkeiten im Alltag, wo es wichtig ist, mit Technik möglichst effektiv und ohne Angst. Hm, you don't. Okay, yeah, this is a little confusing. Uh, so this is pretty much um, Vau Holland, and he's the founder of the Chaos Computer Club. Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't scroll in here. And he, is, um, he said that in 1984 on a um, data security conference, and uh, what it boils down to is that Already back then, he said that hacking isn't just typing on your computer. It is also fixing home appliances. It is uh, li uh, like getting around with technology in your everyday life. And uh, I think that is uh, a very important point. So the history of uh, the repair movement. We used to uh, repair everything when your uh, horse needed new horseshoes. You'd go to, to the smith and they'd also fix uh, uh, whatever door knobs broke. Or So back in the days, you wouldn't just replace stuff that broke. You would fix everything. And people uh, used to be able to fix stuff by themselves. And that is something that people uh, unlearned to do because it's just more convenient replacing everything. So, and in the year 2009, a uh, lady, Martin uh, Postma from Amsterdam, actually, uh, from the Netherlands, uh, founded the first uh, repair cafe, and um, they um, made it a, uh, like a, a real organization, a Stichting, a, a um, foundation, um, in 2010, we called it repaircafe.org, and um, they started uh, handing out uh, starter kits to uh, uh, all different places over Europe, uh, trying to start the same type of repair cafes. It's a kind of a franchise license that you could buy, um, 
Repair Café Aschaffenburg did the same thing in 2014. And it was really helpful because you'd get a lot of material, like you get uh, the invitation letters and uh, uh, all kind of tips and tricks. And uh, you could use their artwork. And then in Germany, there's also the Netzwerk Reparatur Initiativen. And they used to work together with uh, the Stichting uh, Repair Café in the beginning and then eventually split uh, separate ways. And um, they are also sponsored by a non-commercial foundation. And they have a, a really extensive website that lists over 700 ini initiatives from uh, Germany and a very few from Switzerland and Austria as well. And uh, they pretty much do the same thing as the Stichting. They uh, really do it entirely uncommercially. So it's all being funded by uh, yeah, like a rich foundation pretty much. So people do not have to pay anything uh, in order to uh, use their material or um, they don't really have a, a fixed logo or a corporate identity or anything like that. So everybody uh, who wants to be part of the Netzwerk can have their own name. Usually it's uh, some, some use Repair Café, some people use their, their own names like Reparier Bar or something like that. There are a hundred of different uh, types of names. And um, what they also supply is a, uh, a liability insurance um, for people who are concerned about um, being sued by guests in case uh, anybody gets hurt or their stuff breaks. So there is an insurance that you can also do, even though I am not um, aware of any incidents ever happening in all of the years that uh, that uh, people have been repairing in repair cafes. Uh, organization network meetings are also being held yearly. There are uh, ones in the different regions, like in the south, the west, uh, wherever. And um, there's also a federal meeting happening. Okay, so how can I get rid of this? There's a line down there. What? Scroll? Ah, that's it. Excellent. Um, there's a runder Tisch uh, Reparatur, which uh, literally means a round table for repairs that I is uh, in Germany only. Um, I'm sure there are similar uh, types of uh, boards in, uh, in the Netherlands or other countries or on European level. Uh, and it pretty much uh, unites delegates from uh, from the uh, environmental associations, consumer protection agencies, from repair shops and the uh, producing industry uh, scientists, and of course the repair initiatives. And they all get together and uh, they write down a couple of demands. Like uh, what's really important is um, um, that we, we can get access to uh, spare parts, uh, that are actually affordable because most repairs are uh, not worth doing because the parts are more important than replacing the whole product usually, especially for independent repair shops that are not uh, licensed by uh, the manufacturer. In fact, uh, when it comes to uh, manufacturers like Apple, it is actually impossible to get original replacement parts. There have been lawsuits about that and it is uh, really a hassle. So um, the uh, RTR demands that everybody uh, can get a hold of spare parts to fix their devices. The same goes for engineering data or diagnosis tools. Like uh, it is unrealistic that uh, uh, the um, producers keep spare parts for 30 year old machines on stock forever. But with the uh, technology that we have nowadays, it would be able to reproduce those parts, for example, using 3D printers, if the construction data was available or the, the drawings. You know. um, many, many, many repairs could be avoided if uh, the uh, the designs were actually more repair friendly. 
like uh, yeah, most consumer devices are just uh, designed not to be able to be repairable, just throw away pretty much. And um, Sweden already has reduced taxes on repairs. I don't know whether the Netherlands maybe have that too. Germany doesn't, and uh, it yeah, it would be a really nice um, yeah incentive to uh, get incentive to get the repairs more valuable for the customers. So, um, how does a typical day at a repair event or repair cafe look like? I have a little photo gallery. So our guests, uh, we call them guests and not customers because they don't pay for, uh, for service. They come to us to uh, hang around and uh, we fix their stuff together with them. So their guests come in and we fill out a little form, a uh, form that has information about their name, about the uh, stuff that they want to fix, like uh, what's, what's the problem with it, a, a little a diagnosis. Usually it says something like doesn't work. <laughs> And uh, recently we've, we've started putting somebody who's actually uh, uh, a technician at the reception so that they can do a little uh, pre-diagnosis already that is a little more detailed. And then uh, we hang up the, uh, the different um, forms in sequential order and um, the repair helpers uh, will, pick, uh, will pick one sequentially starting from the beginning uh, and take the first one that they think they're capable of uh, fixing. Like not everybody is able to fix a, a tube radio, for example. Uh, this is uh, something that only one or two people in a repair, can, a repair cafe can do. And the others will just skip those numbers and then instead maybe fi fix a, a, a flashlight or something like that instead. Um, and then they'll, they'll uh, call the, the guest and uh, ask for their name and, and they'll go to, to their spot together and fix it. Um, the repair helpers, they usually bring their own toolbox and their uh, measuring devices, uh, whatever they'll need and feel most comfortable working with. Um, uh, part of uh, the reason for that also is that um, many repair cafes don't have their own rooms, their own dedicated rooms. So um, they only happen once every few weeks, for example. So there's no room to store all the tools and all the stuff that's needed. So people, uh, the repair helpers usually bring their own tools. That may also include sewing machines, uh, computer, what not, what not, like a power supply unit, soldering irons, all th those things. So um, most of the uh, in initiatives have uh, some kind of uh, gastronomic part in their name, like a repair, reparier bar or repair cafe or things like that. So that implies that usually there's also some kind of food and drinks provided. So the minimum usually is coffee and cake, but um, we uh, noticed that people really like when there is more food, like uh, at least um, uh, like bread rolls and sometimes warm hot food as well. And um, like in this, uh, we had it in a, um, uh, in a youth center where there's a lot of Turkish uh, ladies and they made uh, all different Turkish special Specialities, that was really good. Um, this is a bicycle repair station. Uh, it happened in a tent outside of one of the uh, venues. And uh, it's from the uh, ADFC, that is the uh, German bicycle club, pretty much like ADAC, just for bicycles. And um, what is important about the aspects of a repair cafe is that we don't try to compete with professional repair shops. So um, what we do is uh, we try helping people um, know uh, or learn how to fix stuff themselves, like the little stuff. And when there is uh, big repairs, like um, 
you need to replace the gear shift or something, then we actually encourage them to go to the close, uh, closest uh, bike dealership and uh, buy the part there. And then we can maybe fix it together with them or they have it fixed there. So um, that's the idea about any, uh, any repair being done at a repair cafe pretty much. So we don't, uh, we don't try to compete with the professionals. We do the stuff that they would tell every customer it's not worth fixing. Like no, literally no professional would fix a 20 euro toaster because it's not worth their time. And, it, and no customer would pay for it to be repaired really. So um, we do the stuff that the professionals think is not worth doing. Um, and therefore it's not a competition in our eyes at least. And uh, if there are things that uh, uh, can be done by professionals or have to be done by professionals, then we send them there, or at least we get the spare parts there. Uh, mending clothes is also something that um, we have our usually our ladies for. <laughs> it's a little sad, but um, uh, it's uh, pretty uh, gender specifics, like the, the men fix the electronics and uh, the wood stuff and the women fix the um, clothes usually, except we have one lady who is a really good uh, electronic uh, elect electronic uh, specialist, so she can solder really well as well. But uh, all the clothes stuff is fixed by by ladies as well. So um, this was a um, an event at a uh, youth center in Aschaffenburg, and you can see the different uh, tables with the different station. For example, this is one of our repair helpers, and this is a, uh, a guest, and they fix some uh, kitchen appliance together. Or here's a sewing machine, I think, and you can't, e you can't really tell who's a repair helper and who is a guest. Uh, everybody is working together happily, and there are different stations all over the place. Um, back here is the, is the blackboard with the, with the forms. And yeah, this is pretty much how it works. Um, that is me with short hair at one of the first, or actually the first <laughs> repair cafe in Aschaffenburg in 2014. And this is the, the mayor of the city with his wife and I fix her uh, kitchen blender or something. Um, so uh, at least in the beginning of a repair cafe, you get a lot of publicity by important people showing up, the newspaper doing, uh, uh, doing a report about it and writing articles, maybe the television showing up. We had all of that happening. And that is of course uh, uh, really important to uh, propagate the idea and uh, get people interested in, uh, in going there and trying it out. Yeah, this is a, a really uh, delicate repair. I think it's a DVD player or something. And uh, once they go into uh, as far as uh, probing with a logic analyzer or a scope and trying to find the signal loss somewhere on a multi-layer uh, board, then it gets too complicated for a repair cafe. And yeah. Uh, we try not to spend uh, the whole six hours of the event uh, for fixing one 20 euro player. So when in the same time you can fix like five or six different uh, things and ma make more people happy. And then, yeah, we have to, uh, to make sure that it doesn't uh, go beyond the scope. Uh, okay, so where do I see uh, synergies between uh, repair cafes and hacker or maker spaces. There are a lot of uh, benefits for the repair cafes and uh, one of the main problems is that a lot of those initiatives are run by uh, pensioners, by older people. Uh, you could really say that because they have the time to do it and they uh, sometimes lack a little bit of uh, new blood. and. Um, Hackers and maker spaces are really full of young people, like starting age zero and up, um, which is uh, a nice thing. Um, 
people in uh, maker spaces are usually experts and very, very well educated, especially when it comes to computer stuff, electronics, uh, things like that. Of course, you're all aware of that. Um, the uh, repair cafes get access to the equipment of a maker space, like uh, scopes, logic analyzers, uh, really good measuring devices, things like that that you usually wouldn't just have at home. Component testers, uh, yeah. So that is also a benefit. And um, of course, all the new uh, prototyping technologies uh, for making spare parts, 3D printers, laser, laser cutters, uh, little CNC mills, and of course, the knowledge to also use them and to design spare parts because people keep buying uh, 3D printers and uh, they are really cheap, but they don't really know how to use them or how to design parts or how to keep the printers working because they constantly break. Um, yeah, and uh, of course also most hackerspaces have dedicated rooms, so they have space uh, while the repair initiatives usually don't or at least in the in the smaller towns, they usually don't have any dedicated space. So uh, what's in for the um, maker and hacker spaces? Um, you really get good uh, publicity through it. That's an important thing. Like uh, you show social commitment. Um, you do something good for the environment. It is very sustainable what we do at uh, repair cafes and uh, it's, Everybody knows that our uh, planet is really uh, not so well off at the moment and uh, we really should work together to try to fix this. And um, yeah, this is a, a good uh, way to start, I think. Also, acquiring members. Uh, I was acquired by the Aschaffenburg Makerspace at a repair cafe event, for example. So I was at the repair cafe in 2014 and then um, when the makerspace formed they went to one of the events and uh, recruited people pretty much. <laughs> um, I would have never guessed that a, a town as small as Aschaffenburg would ever get a makerspace and I never searched for it and they didn't really advertise it um, but that way it worked and we've uh, gotten a few more members uh, through um, repair cafe events as well like uh, people would show up trying to have their um, LCDs soldered to a Raspberry, um, things like that. And then I said, oh, well, this is not really a repair. This is uh, a making, so come to our open space. Um, yeah, and um, like I said, public relations is an important thing. The uh, newspaper will show up, the uh, mayor will show up, and you uh, get to promote your whole space this way really well. Uh, we earned, uh, or didn't earn, we, we were awarded a prize for sustainability last year and uh, all the commitment to Repair Cafe was, um, was one of the main aspects, I guess. So the makerspace got that prize. Um, yeah, and of course, uh, learning repair exercise, uh, that is also an important aspect. Um, people uh, graduate from university and they know everything about Dijkstra and Maxwell and uh, they still may not be able to fix a simple toaster, M may not even be able to get it open in the first place. So that's <laughs> a few basic uh, things that you can easily learn that way. So I did a little research who already is working together. So which um, maker spaces and which uh, repair cafes and I compared the database of the um, German uh, Reparaturinitiativen and the uh, Chaos Computer Club uh, list of ERFAs and um, Chaos Treffs. Uh, one is about 700 entries and the other about 70 entries. And I only found those uh, one, two, three, four, six that had the same address. And this is really few, I think. Um, I found a little more by doing a little research and uh, people uh, talking to me about it after my talk at 
35C3. Um, the first one is us. We have different addresses between the Repair Cafe headquarters, which is the youth cent center and our uh, maker space. So it didn't, uh, it didn't show up in, in my comparison because the addresses didn't match. Um, the same is true for uh, Leipzig and uh, Konstant, Konstanz actually, that's by Bodensee, so close to Switzerland. They actually talked to me and said, uh, the technology space does a repair cafe as well. So I, I think that is way too few working together and I hope that it'll improve. I did a little research on um, the situation in the Netherlands and there is a list on hackerspaces.nl, 14 spaces which I've found and uh, none of them do uh, seem to work together directly with a repair cafe. I also looked at most of the websites and none of them mention anything about uh, repair cafes. So I talked to some guys from RefSpace uh, in their IRC chat and um, it turns out that there are a few people who are uh, working uh, in a uh, repair initiative and are also member of a hackerspace, but that is only individuals, so nothing really organized. Mm. So I've got a really positive example from the city of Jena in uh, Eastern Germany. They also started their Facebook, uh, that should be Facebook. Um, they also started in 2014, like we did, and uh, a couple of their founders were actually from the Hackspace. So they used the uh, Hackspace for their meetings um, and for their, yeah, for their official address pretty much, but they don't use it for repairs because it's too small. Um, they instead do monthly uh, repairs at shifting locations like most of the repair cafes <coughs> do. Um, and they did something really cool. They converted a city bus into a mobi uh, mobile workshop, into a moving workshop pretty much. Uh, I'll put these uh, slides somewhere so you can click on the, or I'll sh just show you. You can look at the Facebook pictures, not the picture gallery, if it loads. Mm, yeah, so this is this is the bus and no, I don't wanna. <laughs> you can see that there's uh, like toolboxes and stuff and they have a saw in there and, oh yeah, there's more pictures. Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> 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 yeah, so they've, they fixed it all up. It was, uh, it was an old one that was out of service. They bought it uh, through donated money and they also got a lot of uh, awards and prizes. So their founder, Oda, is, uh, she's very uh, keen on getting public money. <laughs> and so that's how they uh, were able to, to buy the bus. And um, yeah, they have pretty much everything in there that's needed to, to do basic repairs, like a little saw and uh, all the tools and stuff. Yeah, let me go back to my other thing. Yep. Um, of course, there are also negative examples, uh, possible problems. Um, there was uh, the backspace in um, Bamberg. It's a very active um, hacker space that does a lot of uh, things for the community. And they also tried doing a repair cafe a few years ago and they had um, problems with the, uh, 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 yeah, you could call them customers because they uh, were very demanding and uh, they went there at random times and wanted to get their stuff fixed for free. And um, the people at the uh, backspace were so annoyed that they stopped it. So um, that's a, a negative example. Another negative example would be um, RefSpace. Uh, so like I said, uh, they had tried working together with a local repair cafe a few years ago, I think 
in 2014 and um, they didn't like the way the communication went between the uh, repair cafe and them. Uh, so they had, uh, for example, um, they paid for spare parts on their own, like the volunteers, the repair helpers, uh, didn't get money for spare parts out of their own pocket that they ha had and supplied for the guests, um, which is uh, kind of understandable that they didn't like that idea because usually the, um, the visitors, the guests, they uh, pay donations and there should be enough money uh, or a few euros for the spare parts needed. So, but that was a few years ago, maybe that would be different now. Good, yeah, uh, an approach uh, of resolution for that would be uh, having a clear communication in advance, saying um, we are doing a um, repair event at this Saturday, at this day of the month, and only then people should bring their stuff to be fixed to our place and not at the random open space uh, events that we do weekly or whatnot, because uh, who really <laughs> has fun fixing uh, laptops with broken uh, printer drivers and stuff like that. It's uh, really annoying and it's a hassle and people don't really feel like doing that. So I can understand that maker spaces want to focus on making and not on fixing stupid things that they don't want to deal with. Uh, uh, family is usually a hassle enough having to fix their computers. Yeah. <laughs> we don't need random people to do that. But at the repair cafe, usually there are a few people who uh, don't mind. So we have people helping uh, with uh, fucked up windows installations and things like that. Uh, sometimes we try convincing people to use live uh, Linux CDs and things like that. Um, and also what's very important is uh, having a professional repair shop uh, in the back of your head that you can refer people to. Uh, a shop that has regular business hours. So if people send you an email or call or something, uh, you can just tell them, we aren't a repair shop, go to this place. Like uh, uh, we never repair stuff that's not carryable at the uh, repair cafe, once uh, somebody tried putting a dishwasher there and we said, we don't have a water line, we don't have a wastewater line, <laughs> we have no way of testing that thing here, please call somebody who does those kinds of repairs at your place at home. No? Um, yeah, so always have, um, or, have an, uh, when it comes to tube radios, usually uh, they need replacement of all dozens of capacitors that are in there. And that just takes too long for a repair cafe to uh, be able to fix that. So uh, we have, uh, have the address of somebody who does that, that we can refer people to. To what? Uh, that is a saying of uh, Wau Holland back from 81 or something, and it's a German or Germanish uh, <laughs> dialect for do something. Yeah? So uh, this is my, my uh, appeal, please uh, volunteer as a repair helper in, uh, in a repair cafe or in a repair initiative in your home village or hometown. There are so many in the Netherlands, uh, the list is, uh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it seems like every quarter in every big city has at least one and every uh, village has one. So you don't have to drive far. <laughs> uh, go to repaircafe.org and find when the next and the closest event is. And usually you can just show up with your toolbox and start uh, working they don't have any, uh, uh, yeah, any thresholds that you need to surpass. Um, at least that's how it is with us. Anybody who shows up and uh, shows enough uh, self-confidence that they uh, feel like being able to repair something, then they can. Yeah. Um, if you are at a makerspace, talk about 
um, doing some kind of a consultation hour with your uh, fellows there. Uh, you probably have a, a meeting, a monthly, weekly meeting or something. Just suggest it, see what the reaction is. Uh, there are many positive examples. Okay, not that many, but there are a couple of ones that work really well together. Um, and if it's just providing the rooms or providing one or two people or just going there looking at how it all works, uh, seeing if there is any room for help. Um, sometimes it's not just hardware, sometimes it's also software that can be fixed or uh, many maker spaces do other things uh, than IT, like for example, woodworking or metal working. And there are al always uh, other um, types of trades that or crafts that can be helpful when it comes to repairs as well. Uh, or of course, if there is no uh, repair cafe um, close and you think there is uh, the need of having one in your home place or hometown, then uh, find a few people that think the same because it's no fun doing it alone. Get the starter kit from the repaircafe.org uh, and just try it out doing a few repairs. Uh, people really appreciate it. So um, sustainability food, this is supposed to be uh, invisible to you. <laughs> okay, I fucked up that. Um, so keep using legacy hardware or strip and exploit for parts. Um, usually uh, maker spaces are good at that. Uh, for the first reason, um, we don't want to pay much for really expensive professional hardware usually like servers and stuff, they can be really expensive. So what do we do? We take the stuff from work that's being thrown away or thrown out and run that until it dies or strip it for parts. This is always a good thing and it is very sustainable. Unless it's a, a part that really is very energy consuming. <laughs> um, Kids soldering and making classes, uh, like the badge team does that I think uh, Teaching kids how to solder means teaching them a very important repair technique. Um, soldering is uh, needed to uh, do most of uh, uh, the electronics repairs. And when you teach them in a fun way how to solder together a badge or something, blinking something, then uh, that's a very good start. And. Um, yeah, hardware hacking and upcycling, you already saw the, the video here. This is uh, something that, of course, everybody really loves doing. Mm, can I show that? Uh, I'll show it like this. What? <laughs> mm, okay, then I'll show it like this. like uh yeah wrong video like uh making something like this like uh, self-driving uh, bobby cars out of broken hoverboards uh this is of course the coolest and best way uh to do a repair <laughs> uh, those two guys are here of course i'm sure you've seen them <laughs> So there's uh, been a conference, uh, Bits und Bäume, uh, literally means bits and trees. Uh, it happened in uh, November in Berlin, and it's a conference uh, for bringing together digitalization and sustainability. Um, unfortunately, I was not there. Some of the uh, uh, guys from um, Chaos Computer Club were there, and um, it was apparently very, uh, very good and maybe it'll happen again next year and then I'll try to go there as well. So people are seeing that there is uh, actually a connection between the two and are starting to work together. Um, Keras Computer, oh yeah, it's this again. Uh, Keras Computer Clubs R5 uh, is uh, 
mm, yeah, pretty much uh, reuse, repair, recycle, rethink, redesign. And it's, uh, yeah, we started uh, trying to think about how can the CARES Computer Club get more sustainable pretty much and uh, trying to network together all the uh, different activities in the separate, uh, yeah, in the separate maker spaces. And um, can we see that here? No, we can't. So we founded that, uh, so that was founded in uh, March as resources and recycling in March 2018. And uh, at uh, 35C3, we had another little kickoff meeting and we hope to, to keep it going. So now there's some time for questions. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> As uh, you get random people uh, to your repair cafe, how do you know which parts that you need to have in stock or, or where do the parts come from? Yeah, so I would say most of the parts um, are uh, like fuses, temperature fuses, uh, electrolyte cap capacitors and resistors. And uh, those things we have there usually the uh, repair helpers have their stuff on stock. Um, we have a little uh, stock that travels around with the uh, repair cafe. It has the little piggy banks and the signs and uh, the forms, things like that in it. And there we also have the fuses. And um, so those are most of the spare parts. And uh, if we need something uh, more complicated, like, I don't know, like a bimetal uh, temperature switch or an electronics part, then we uh, look for the part together with the uh, customer and we have the customer order it from, uh, if it works, like from Reichelt. I don't know if you know, you know Reichelt uh, or Konrad or something like that. And they order it to their home and bring it again the next time. So if I'm correct, then, uh, then you look uh, the, the, this month, uh, okay, this is what needs to be done, and then they get the part, and next month, then they come, and then they do uh, the, fix the actual fixing. Yes, they come again, yeah. But that happens maybe once or twice every time. So we get about 40 to over 80 repairs per um, event with about 10 or more repair helpers. Uh, yeah, so, and most of them are trivial, like just like switching the power cable, things like that, that don't really need a part. Or uh, what we can also do is sometimes um, we take a, a, a cable from a device that's broken for good because it's just not safe to use anymore or it's unfixable, and we can just give that to somebody else. Um, that usually works out well. Last year, we also had an uh, event which we called uh, Spermelfest. I don't know how to translate that, but um, people were, Sperm yeah, party. yeah, <laughs> people were uh, allowed to drop off all of their junk on the yard of the youth center, and then people could pick uh, what they like, like a, an, a, an easy chair with a broken um, lining, or how is that called, like a broken seeds, and then they could uh, take it to the repair people and have it fixed or fix it together with them and then take it home again. And all the rest would be uh, taken care of by uh, the city waste department for free. So usually people have to take their trash home with them. If it's unfixable, they also sign for that because we can take care of all the trash, um, but they can bring it home and then recycle it. We have. Uh, uh, in, I don't know how it is here, but um, actually the um, the recycling uh, places, they want to get as much electronics, uh, scrap electronics as possible because they need to fulfill a quota. So it is impossible getting um, broken stuff for parts out of their uh, recycling containers. You are not allowed to. Uh, even if you see somebody throwing away a flat TV that they just don't need anymore, that is fine. And once they give it to the uh, recycling uh, place, it is gone for good and it needs to be 
uh, it needs to be recycled, not reused. It is really sad uh, because this is uh, the, the current law. Um, you need, uh, they need to bring in, I don't know, like the, um, the tonnage, the, uh, the um, weight of 40% or something of the stuff that's been sold a few years ago. So it only goes by weight and they need to collect as much electronic waste uh, as has been sold in a few years ago. And this is really ridiculous. It's the wrong approach because recycling always means breaking stuff apart and only using the materials and they degrade. So we want to reuse and not recycle. So recycling is, is not the right way. Hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, can come forward. <laughs> uh, let's see. <laughs> ah, it might work. We need one of those little cubes. Uh, next, next time go upstairs or huh? <laughs> this project is already going to sleep. Uh, we have a little more. You said you would like to recycle old uh, electronics. How do you... Uh, take that with in mind with uh, the energy consumption of these days. Because yeah. the, the older electronics are using way more energy mm -hmm. than new ones. So yeah, that is true for very few devices actually. When it comes to a tube radio, it's apparent. They use a lot of electricity. But when it comes to, for example, a washing machine, they say it's A3 plus water and power saving. But this is only true for one specific power saving program that nobody uses because it doesn't work right. <laughs> so um, pretty much warming up the water for a washing machine, for a dishwasher, for things like that, it is 100% effective usually because you put uh, the power in there and it warms up the water. What can you do? Huh? <laughs> the tele technology from 30 years ago is the same as now. No? You put in the energy and it's a simple calculation. The water gets warm. No? So, uh, and the th with water it's a little bit different, but uh, too few water is not really our problem. Think about how much um, metal do you need to build a machine like that? How many thousands and 10,000 of liters of water do you need to produce a kilogram of steel? And literally no device um, can beat uh, the footprint, uh, the carbon footprint, the water footprint, the energy footprint that it needs to, um, to produce uh, in their lifetime nowadays because the machines don't last very long. Yeah, okay, there are a few, there are, a few, but I'm talking about kitchen appliances and TVs and things like that. Like when they say they're super efficient, buy a new 52 inch TV um, because it'll take less energy than your old one. That is ridiculous because they will never ever in their lifetime, in their designed lifetime, because they are only designed to last a few years, uh, catch up that uh, footprint. So it is always better repairing old stuff. And it is also okay to keep a 30 year old washing machine running because uh, it is fine. As long as it's just a little spare part, <coughs> we have no problem with that. Okay, thank you. That's it. Thank you very much for your attention. Oh, you have a question. <laughs> what a change. So where the, uh, when you start the repair cafe, then where the spare parts came from originally? So you took things apart and then you can see what is usable or? Um, yeah, so the uh, people who do electronics repairs usually have stuff on stock. So they would bring a few fuses, a few resistors and mm -hmm. stuff each time. And then people would give donations and we'd be able to buy a, a little stock for the repair cafe of the stuff that usually breaks the most and also of uh, things like glue and uh, yeah. yeah. And how do you know if something is really beyond repair? 
<laughs> when something gets unsafe to use, mainly, like uh, when somebody has a hair dryer with live wires hanging out mm. and they <laughs> don't yeah. have screws, they're only glued together <laughs> because some uh, devices or m many devices usually are, or nowadays are designed like that, not to be repaired. And then we, s we say, you cannot use this anymore. We cannot safely repair it. Uh, please throw it away. Um, or uh, when it's a, like a really old main board of a computer that has some magic problems, <laughs> then we say, no. Uh, you, can, you can get a, a, like an equivalent uh, that's still working for free as a donation from something, but we cannot fix this because it, yeah, it's... Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. I hope to see you all at a repair initiative. <laughs>